morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Reverend Ruben Diaz Sr. I am the chairman of the newly created for Hire Vehicle Committee. This is a, a new committee. You start? Yes, yeah, I'm, no, we gotta go. yeah, I'm starting, I'm starting. This is a newly created committee. Uh, we started working in January 1st, and because of this committee, today we are arriving to a position when the city of New York could make history, and because of this committee, many members of the city council has come forward with powerful and, and very interesting pieces of legislation. I have to thank New York City Council Speaker Cody Johnson. He created the committee. He trusted me and gave me the support, all the support that I that was needed. I would like to, to thank Speaker Chief of Staff, Mr. Jason Goldman. He's been very, very open and very helpful. The member of the Foharia Vehicle Committee. I would like to thank all the people, because nothing, nothing gets done by itself. There are people, sometimes the people don't know, but there are people who are behind, and they are the ones that really deserve all the credit. And people that support when all the go negative, there are people like the council, the central staff, staff council, Malak Master Dean, Luis Cholea Brown, Mr. Hector Figueroa, and the member of the 32nd BJ Union, Union, the Metropolitan Taxica Board of Trade, Ms. Barabi, they say, and the New York Taxi Workers Alliance, most important, my counselor, my friend, my body. Christopher Lee, he's been the one putting everything together. <laughs> Christopher, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And I would like also to find the Yellow Hats for their support. Today, we will be voting on six important pieces of legislation. I'm proud to have introduced three of these bills. The first bill, the first proposed is introduction A38C. Will, this bill will create a new licensing requirement for high volume for higher services companies that dispatch 10,000 or more for higher vehicle trips per day. This bill will set licensing conditions to ensure proper oversight of the big apps companies that have had such a large impact on the industry and the city and will allow the city to tailor future laws and regulation in a way it has not been able to be done in the past. The second bill, Introduction, introduction 634B, which will waive the license fees for taxis and for hire vehicles that are wheelchair accessible. The current license fee for taxis is $550, and for hire vehicle is $275. Waiving these fees will give drivers an additional incentive to use wheelchair accessible vehicle. The third piece of legislation, introduction 958A, which will remove the increased financial penalties, which can be as high as $10,000 for unauthorized street hails by TLC licensed drivers in the hail exclusionary zone. We will also be voting on proposed uh, bill number four, proposed by Council Member Levine, 
that's introduction 144B, this bill will require the TLC to study and decide whether to adopt vehicle utilization standards or regulation on the number of Ohio vehicle licenses. During the one year study, TLC will not issue new for hire vehicle licenses unless the vehicle is wheelchair accessible and TLC will be able to issue new licenses if it determines that services is needed. The fifth bill will be proposed by, is proposed by Council Member Lander. It's introduction 890B, which will require TLC to set minimum payment for drivers on trips arranged by high volume for higher services. Additionally, TLC will have to study payments to drivers not working for high volume for higher services and study whether to set minimum fares for higher vehicle before deciding whether to establish rules in those areas. I would like to recognize some of the council members here. Uh, we have council member Constantinides, council member Rose, council member Borelli, council member Levine, council member Lander. I would like, I would like to invite council member <clears throat> Levine, uh, if he has to, if he would like to speak on behalf of, of the bill that he's proposing. Okay. Council Member Levine. Well, thank you very much, Chair Diaz, uh, and thank you for uh, uh, speaking on this set of legislation as well as your leadership in bringing this package of bills um, uh, expeditiously um, through this committee. Um, I want to thank you for allowing me to say a few words to the committee this morning. Uh, my name is Councilmember Stephen Levin, and I'm the sponsor of Intro 144, a bill that provides a thoughtful and measured response to the transportation impacts that our communities have faced over the past several years. An average of 2,000 new vehicles are added to the city's streets each month, oversaturating the market and making it difficult for drivers to earn a decent living in New York City. In fact, that is not sustainable. The taxi industry has had caps on vehicles for over 70 years, and it's time that we bring some balance to the system uh, where we are seeing our streets flooded with more and more vehicles each month. In the past few years alone, the number of TLC licensed vehicles has almost doubled from 74,000 in 2014 to 130,000 today. So, so just since we uh, last considered this piece of legislation in 2015, um, we've seen an almost doubling during that time. If we continue to let drivers struggle to pay their rent and we turn a blind eye to growing congestion, we are not doing our job as elected officials. Intro 144 presses the pause button so that we as a city can examine how best to ensure equitable pay for all drivers tackle ever worsening congestion, and keep up with the changing landscape so that riders throughout the city have access to transportation options. During the one-year restriction on issuances of new for hire vehicle licenses, the Taxi and Limousine Commission will work with the Department of Transportation to study vehicle utilization rates, access to services in different geographic areas of the city, driver income, and traffic congestion so that we can enact an adaptive forward-thinking control mechanism that balances the need for varied transportation access with our citywide goals of maintaining a living, and f living wage and a fair public transit system. This bill also includes an exemption for accessible vehicles. Our city's need to address overall transportation accessibility is long overdue, and this bill will incentivize companies to speed up their commitment to make vehicle transportation more accessible to disabled riders across New York City. At any time during the one-year pause in the issuances of new FHV licenses, a company or an individual can come to the TLC and get apply for and receive a TLC license for an accessible vehicle. 
Um, I want to thank the drivers that have spoken out and are calling for this much needed legislation, like Richard Chow, who generously shared his story with me and whose brother died recently by suicide after going into debt as a taxi driver. We simply can't wait any longer. We need to enact sensible regulation now. Um, I want to thank uh, Speaker Johnson for his critical support for this legislation. I want to thank uh, Chair Ruben Diaz Sr. Uh, for, um, for his uh, unwavering support and, uh, uh, and, and leadership on this. I want to thank Councilmember Brad Lander, who has sponsored uh, really critical uh, legislation uh, that works uh, in harmony with, uh, with Intro 144. I want to acknowledge uh, Jason Goldman, uh, our Chief of Staff here at the Council, Laura Popa, who uh, worked uh, many, many late hours um, with her staff to ensure that this bill is uh, balanced, uh, that it is fair, um, and that it is going to be effective in addressing uh, the concerns that we've seen. And so I want to acknowledge her staff, James Giovanni, D. Giovanni, Jonathan Maserano, Emily Rooney, Rick Arbello, Chima Obasher, John Basil, um, Malak Nasareddin, uh, Nell Beekman, and I uh, also want to acknowledge uh, Tirza Nasser. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, uh, the Taxi Worker Alliance, uh, Beta Vita Sai, and her entire team, who has been um, so heartfelt on um, making sure that we are keeping in mind the impact to the drivers across the sectors of uh, for hire vehicles. Um, you know, there was a time in New York City when uh, you could, as a recent immigrant to New York City, drive a cab and be able to make it into the middle class uh, to provide a better future for your family, uh, for your children. And uh, what we've seen over the last several years is um, that foothold in the American dream slip away for thousands of drivers. And, um, and it's important that we as a city acknowledge that we have a responsibility here to act. And I want to thank Beta V and, and uh, Taxi Worker Alliance for, um, for reminding us of that, of that responsibility. I also want to acknowledge the IDG, uh, the Independent Drivers Guild for their advocacy. And I want to acknowledge all of uh, the organizations and people um, from Lyft and Uber and Via um, to uh, National Action Network, uh, the NAACP, um, who have um, raised concerns about this legislation, um, uh, but have always uh, come with uh, you know a very uh, thoughtful and uh, important perspective, and uh, and I think is really. Uh, made this legislation uh, a better piece of legislation, uh, making sure that uh, we're keeping in mind that their uh, discrimination among, uh, from taxi drivers uh, to uh, the African American community in New York City is, uh, is a real issue that has been going on for far too long and we need to make meaningful changes to address that and I think it's important that that be acknowledged. Um, I think that it's important that we all work collectively moving forward to make sure that we are um, looking at this industry, balancing the needs of consumers, of uh, communities of color, of drivers, um, in a way that is uh, responsible and, uh, and, and uh, respectful and uh, commensurate with the responsibility of this body. So, with that, I want to turn it back to our chair. Chair, thank you very much. I encourage my colleagues to vote aye on intro 144. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Levin. It's a been, it has been an honor, a privilege for me to work with you and to be sure that we all do something that the city of New York be proud of. Uh, Council Member Lander, I also appreciate your support and your, the way you have received me uh, since I came, and I appreciate and I'm f very proud of being part of the team. So, Councilmember Lander. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I really want to echo that 
sentiment of partnership and collaboration and looking at the research and listening to New Yorkers across a wide range of perspectives in this really complex field. And I want to give real credit to you and your team, uh, to Councilmember Levin, who's been a real partner in this, and to Speaker Johnson as well. Obviously, there's been a lot of noise out there in the media and in the social media and on the apps. But I think if you look at what we're doing, if you look at the data behind it, if you look at the process behind it, the package of legislation that we are passing today gets the balance right. We are confronting plummeting driver pay and rising driver poverty, growing congestion, the need for accessible, wheelchair accessible FHV service for thousands of New Yorkers with the need to provide good service to customers, and we don't take that for granted. We appreciate the way that app-based service has been a game changer for families, especially in the outer borough. And I know that Steve and I also feel especially sensitive as white men who have never had the indignity of raising our hands and having cab after cab drive by us of New Yorkers of color who have come to rely on app service that, that transport them to their home, to their jobs, um, and of course so many people in the outer boroughs. Um, but it's also just no secret that the rapid, spectacular growth of Uber and Lyft and Via, 500% in the last three years alone, has made it impossible for drivers to earn a living and feed their families, and the data on that is overwhelming. The report that James Parrott and Michael Reich uh, put forward a couple of months ago makes it plain. The overwhelming majority of Uber and Lyft and app-based for hire vehicle drivers are immigrants. Two-thirds are driving full-time, but 85% don't earn a living wage. And let's remember, they're categorized as independent contractors, so they have to pay all their expenses. They don't get health benefits or sick days. Um, now we've reached a point where 40% of them have incomes low enough to qualify for Medicaid. Um, that growth, a 500% growth in cars, is what's made that happen. Um, a $3 decline in hourly pay just from 2016 to 2017, and the reason is pretty straightforward, and the report makes it clear. Right now, those cars are empty 40% of the time. That's bad for congestion that they're driving around empty, but the drivers don't earn anything when their cars are empty, and so this growth, its impact on congestion, and it's less understood but just critical driving up of driver poverty uh, is what has compelled us to bring this legislation forward. I'm proud to be the prime sponsor of Intro 890B, which will make New York City the first city in the country to require that Uber and Lyft and other for hire vehicle apps pay their drivers a living wage. Uh, a very creative formula developed by those researchers and supported by the Taxi and Limousine Commission will provide that they earn $17.22 an hour after expenses so they can feed their families. That's still not a lot of money in this very unaffordable city, but it's uh, about $6,000 on average more than they are making today in a year, and that will go a long way to making it possible uh, for people to feed their families in this city, uh, to live here in a basic way. It'll also have a very positive impact on service and congestion because it provides Uber and Lyft an incentive to get that 40% down. And if we can have cars deployed in places uh, with incentives from the companies where we need the service, then we can achieve the goal, not just of the service we have today, but of improved service for all New Yorkers, especially outside the Central Business District and in the outer boroughs, in a way that also functions to limit congestion and boost driver pay. It's a smart solution. It really is gonna carry us forward. And then I'll just finally close by underlining the point Council Member Levin made about accessible vehicles, which I just don't think has gotten enough attention here, even from me. Um, the, the companies, the app companies, all uh, just made a consent decree in court to get to 25% vehicles that uh, are wheelchair accessible over the next few years. And I've been saying until recently, today they're in the single digits. But the truth is, today they're not even in the single digits. It's 0.5%. 
of app-based FHVs, which are wheelchair accessible today. So if those companies want to get more vehicles on the road in the year to come while the pause is in place, we will be thrilled if they add wheelchair accessible vehicles out there that make sure all New Yorkers have the high quality service they need on streets that are less congested and with drivers that are not in poverty but can earn a living wage. Mr. Chair, thank you very much, and I'm proud to be a supporter of this full package. Thank you, Councilmember Landon. Uh, all the members of the committee are here except Councilmember Vallon. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I am now ready to call on the vote. I will call now a call for vote on proposed introduction, introduction 144-B. 634-B, 838-C, 890-B, and 958-A. I recommend my colleagues a, a yes vote on all of them. And now I ask the committee clerk to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on four higher vehicles. Chair Diaz. Yes or no? Constantinidis. Aye or no? Rodriguez. Before I vote, I would like to say that in the last four years, we've been working so hard in this council to level the playing field of the taxi industry of the great city of New York. We feel that a city that last year welcomed 65 million tourists with an 8.5 million population provide opportunity for everyone to do good. We feel that the 75 ad company has a market, but they should not expect that they will be allowed to grow in the city by destroying the traditional other player from the yellow taxi, livery taxi, and the traditional black car. In the last four years, we make a lot of changes. We established the universal license. Universal license. We were able to be there to, for the hardworking men and women especially those 6,000 independent medallion owners who suffer a lot, who many of them, being, some of them being committed suicide, some of them that doesn't have enough to pay the mortgage or the house or sending the kids to college. Today, we are making a history by voting in this package of legislation that will continue level the playing field to all sectors of the great city of New York. With that, I vote aye. Rose. I and all. Moya. Permission to explain my vote, Mr. Chairman. Um, while I'm voting uh, for intro uh, 144B, uh, I do have concerns with the potential uh, impacts it could have both uh, in the service in traditionally underserved communities uh, in the outer boroughs and on other smaller companies in the four higher uh, vehicle sector, including uh, numerous liveries and car services in the district uh, that I represent. Uh, again, as a member for the four higher uh, committee, I will continue to work uh, to ensure that the TLC is responsive to our community's needs and that the FAH sector works for everybody. Um, we are not intending to take away services. Uh, that, that is why we have given the TLC the power to uh, ignore the cap if we see that it is actually affecting uh, the outer borough communities uh, that we are intending uh, to help. Uh, so with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you. I will be voting uh, aye on all. Borelli. Aye on all except 144 and 890. We have a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items are adopted by the committee with the exceptions of introductions 144B and 890B are adopted by a vote of five in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is closed.